Welcome to part two of our meerkat tutorial. So the first thing I'm going to do is take some of my Shetland white wool and I'm going to split a piece in half so I've got roughly the same amount on each side and then I'm going to roll it into a Swiss roll shape like so and then just stab it down. So this piece is probably measuring about three inches in length at the moment and about an inch and a half in width. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring one end up and I'm going to round it off so I've got this kind of sort of half semicircle shape on one half of the piece and I'm just using my fine twisted needles here just to felt that down. We're not felting it down really firmly, we're just creating um, the idea of the shape if that makes sense because once it's added to the meerkat in a moment we can shape it a bit more. So just make sure that you're pulling it off the mat as you go so it doesn't felt itself to the mat. So that's one made, so we're going to do the same thing with the other. So there we go, so that's three inches by one and a half inches, what a guess. So we're going to take the first piece and we're going to place it over where his thigh would be, so around the same area as his bottom, and then it's going to go tail down to his where would be his ankle, and we're just going to felt that down into position with our medium twisted needles now. So just make sure that you're felting down the peripherals first, so we're getting it tacked into place so it can't move anywhere. And once you've felted down the side, then we can start felting around down the, the central parts of this piece. But we want to really keep that rounded shape at the top and really make a feature of that because that's going to create what will look like his kind of sort of hip area later on when he's finished and his kind of leg muscles. So it's a really important area that we really want to make a, a feature of. I apologise if there's any background noise. My children have decided to wake up uh, a little bit earlier than usual. We've had an iPad crisis. We couldn't find the iPads, which I found more distressing than I think the children did, to be fair. Um, but it's okay. They have the iPads now, but now they're downstairs. So it's potentially going to be a little bit noisier than usual. Okay, so once you've felted it down on one side, all you need to do then is bring round those loose pieces around to the leg. Now this can be quite tricky because it's quite a thick piece and you're felting it down onto somewhere that's quite narrow. So again, I would say just catch that peripheral first, like I'm doing here, catch that side piece and get that pulled. So I'm kind of almost pulling it round with my needles and then felting it down onto that calf of, the, of our meerkat and then doing the same on the other side and then kind of felting it down into the actual leg itself. But by pulling it, it just kind of tacks it down. I say kind of a lot, I really noticed that recently. But it, um, it tacks it down and puts it into a firm position so then you've got the ability to felt it without it moving around and making life difficult for yourself. So that is probably the best way to approach this part of the tutorial. And if you're new to needle felting and you've never needle felted before and this is your first ever project, I would say definitely use finger gloves for this project because it can be quite tricky in areas. I would say that this project is probably more of an intermediate, um, intermediate, yeah, intermediary, intermediate, intermediate level. Um, and um, it, it can be quite hard at times. There's areas where it's really straightforward but just take your time with it I always say if you take your time you can't go wrong if you if you rush something that's when you make mistakes and it takes longer to correct your mistakes rather than doing it right in the first place just by taking a little bit longer to get it right so I'm going to speed things up for you now because you know what you're doing but effectively you just need to felt all this down with your needles and ensure it tapers down onto the calf and the ankle and then you need to do the same thing on the opposite leg as well so just add it in the same way that we've done here and then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take another piece of wool and we're going to create another Swiss roll shape and this is measuring about three inches in length and about one and a half to two inches in width we're going to place it over our head and we're going to felt this down using our medium needles again. Again, just speeding everything up. It's really important that you really focus on getting this felted down into the, the neck area, that crease of the neck, to create that divide. Otherwise, again, you're just going to have one piece the same width all the way down, and it's going to take away from that realistic, realistic look that we want to go for. So once you've tacked all of this into position, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take another slither, we're going to take a piece of um, our white core wool, split it in half, and then we're going to make a kind of like a circular shape. So I'm going to start rolling it, but I'm going to turn it slightly as I roll it using my 
my left hand to just turn it and hold it with my dominant hand. So we've got this kind of round shape here and I'm going to place it on his cheek, so his left cheek, and I'm just going to tack that down with my medium needles just around the peripherals initially just to get it all into place. And this is going to form his big lovely juicy cheeks that you see on meerkats. You don't want to felt too much down the centre of this piece because we want to keep the bulk. We want to felt it down so that it's on, on our head, but we don't want to felt it down really firmly because we want to keep that, that bulk on the meerkat's cheek. So it's, just, it's a fine balance, but you'll know it when you see it. So I'm just going to go over to my fine needles now and just finish it off and get more of a smoother integration between the two pieces because we don't want to have any obvious joins when we add our, our head wrap later on. Okay, so that's the first one done and I've added the second as well. So the next thing to do is make another piece and this time I'm going to make almost like a kind of triangular piece. So I'm folding it round as you can see in the video and I'm just making the most of those side areas, just get rid of that excess. So we've got this triangular shape and I'm going to place it so that the point is pointing upwards. And I'm just going to felt that down onto his head. You can see there. So this is going to be the piece where you've got, you're going to be adding his nose later. And if you look at a meerkat, you, they do have this kind of pronounced triangular shape on their muzzle area. So again, don't felt too much down the centre, felt it enough to get it on there, but not so much that you flatten it. And again, just going around those edges to get it nice and secure. And then I'm just going to make, make a bit more of that shape. So the next thing I'm going to do is take another smaller slither of wool and I'm going to roll this into kind of another Swiss roll shape. But this time it's going to be much smaller. So I'm only going to go for about three turns. I'm just going to pull away that excess. So it's measuring about an inch in length and about half an inch in width. And we're going to place this under his, what would be his chin, under the bottom of his head and tack that into position. I'm just going to swap over to my medium needles here because we want to create this little mouth shape on our meerkat for when we add the head wrap later on and it gives a lovely shape by, by doing this technique. And we're going to narrow it a bit more as you can see here. So I'm using my needles, I'm getting rid of that bulk around where his neck would be. We don't want that to stick out so I'm going to take some of that away but I want to have like a little area where his chin would be and also it kind of gives us a good position for his mouth. So it should look like this once it's added. Next, I'm going to take another piece and divide it in half. Just stretch it out a bit. I'm going to fold it again into another triangular shape. Okay, and this is going to go onto his muzzle again. This is going to be slightly smaller than the triangle, triangle we made a minute ago. So just keep folding it round. I'm just going to felt that down so it doesn't unravel. There we go. And then I'm going to place it again so the point side is going upwards onto our muzzle and the bottom is just above where we've added our chin, so where his mouth would be, as you can see on the video. And I'm using my fine needles here because I want to get everything really nicely integrated. I don't want any lumps and bumps when we come to add the head wrap later. So by using my fine needles, I can get a nice smooth finish between the additional piece I've just added and the rest of the head. So I'm just speeding everything up for you now so you can see what I'm doing here. And I'm really focusing on, again, those peripherals, really focusing on getting that felted down and not so much on the central part because I don't want to lose the bulk there. So it should look like this eventually. So you want to have that bulk there, again, not focusing too much on felting down the middle piece. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is take some more of our white Gotland wool bats, um, sorry, white Shetland wool bats. And we're just going to add a bit of bulk to his arms because his arms are a bit thin at the moment. So I'm going to anchor this down across his chest long nice long piece and then we're going to just fold it around his arms all the way down to the hand and then back up again and then just felt that down into his arm i swapped needles there i went from a medium and i swapped to a fine because you've got a lot of dense wool here so a fine needle will be easier to felt down rather than a medium needle 
and then the same on the other side. So he should look like this. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take some of our brown wool bats. I'm going to split this in half and we're going to wrap his legs. Okay. So I'm going to take my first long piece, try and get this nice and long if you can. And I'm going to anchor it down around the kind of the crotch lower torso area so it can't come away. And then once that's anchored into position, and I'm just using my fine needles now because I want to get a finer finish here. I'm going to wrap this around his leg. So I'm just really getting it felted onto the leg first. And then wrapping it round. And you want to really make sure that this is nice and straight now. This is really important now. And I'm using, the wool I'm using, it's, um, it's like a roving bats. So it wasn't the best, easiest wool to use for this tutorial. It would have been better using a carded bats, if I'm honest. But, um, but this was the kind of the best color I had to, to do this tutorial. So um, as you can see here, I was struggling a bit trying to spread the wool out so it evenly went across the, the leg. But I would say you want to get a carded bats rather than a, rather than a roving. And then I'm just going to bring this all the way down to the foot. And then back up again. Try, if you can, not to get too much wool around the ankle and the foot because we don't want to add too much additional bulk there. We want to try and keep it as slender as possible. So you want to give this a really, really good felt now to really get this anchored into our, into our core wool of our sculpture. So I've sped everything up here, but really focus on that foot area and that ankle. Try and get that as slender as possible because meerkats do have very slender narrow ankles and, and calves. And they're very muscular, aren't they? They're very muscular creatures where they do all that running around trying to escape being eaten by things. It must be quite stressful to be a meerkat, I reckon. It's not all going to the cinema and eating popcorn like they say in the adverts. <laughs> so I'm gonna do exactly the same thing on the other side now, on the other leg. So I'm just gonna, again, anchor down that initial piece, the end, and then wrap it round and you should have something that looks like this. So the next thing I'm going to do is go to my brush mat and I'm going to cover my brush mat, so the, the surface of the brush mat, with a few layers of my, my taupe or brown coloured wool bats here. And I'm just spreading them out again because it's just this, this roving and it would have been easier with the bats. And then I'm just going to felt this down using my multi-tool to create one large piece. And just flip it over so you should eventually have something that looks like this. Okay, so we're going to bring our meerkat back in. We're going to take that piece that we've just made, which was about the same width as our brush mat. And then I'm going to take my, my fine needles. I'm just going to make a little incision so that his tail can fit through with my, with my embroidery scissors. And then I'm just going to felt that down into place. So I'm starting off around that bottom area, felting down those two loose flaps where we've made that cut for his tail to fit. And then once we've done that, I'm just going to flip him round and we're going to bring those sides round first of all. So bringing the first side around, try and get this as taut as you can. The tighter you get it, the easier life will be when you come to felt it down and it'll be a much quicker process. If you bring it round and it's really loose, you're going to have loads of gaps. You're going to end up with sort of a really kind of, it's a bit like when you ice a cake, you're going to end up with a really uneven surface. You're going to have lots of air pockets. It's going to be a pain in the bum to get rid of all those air pockets and get it nice and smooth. So really bring it around nice and taut and life will be a lot more pain-free for you, <laughs> a lot more stress-free when you're doing this part. So just, and again, what I'm doing, I'm working from the inside out. So I'm taking my needles in and then going outwards, if you can see on the video here. So I'm just twisting them around. And that just helps again to get rid of any air pockets. So starting in the center of his back and working my way outwards. See, so you can see here, I'm doing it like that as well. I'm bringing them round and getting a nice even finish. The nice thing with this wall is because it's very lofty, um, it's very easy to get a nice smooth finish with it as well. So it should look like this at the moment. 
And what we're going to do now, as you can see on the legs, we've got some white gaps here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some small pieces of bats, place them over our legs, and I'm just going to cover those over. Get rid of any cheeky white areas. Okay, and then another piece just to cover that knee over there. But not too much because we don't want to add loads of bulk to our um, meerkat and you might find that you don't have this issue it's just because of the wall I'm using that I've had to do that okay so now he's looking like this so the next thing I'm going to do is take my fine needles and I'm going to make a bit more of that hip area there so I'm using my needles side by side my fine twisted needles and I'm felting down between the gap of where we added that additional kind of hip piece earlier and the rest of his torso so you can see here I'm really making something of this kind of this leg joint here this thigh muscle it's very kind of pronounced so take your time with this and when we come to add some additional white wool later this will kind of really really sort of hold its own so you should have something that looks like this. I'm just gonna go back in with my needles and create a bit more of an indentation into that gap that we've created, just to give, give him more of a thigh muscle there. And then I'm gonna go back to my brush mat. I'm gonna take some more of that wool bats and I'm actually gonna add a couple of layers here of the wool bats just to get a thicker piece. This is measuring about seven inches in length by about two and a half to three inches in width. So I'm just gonna give it a bit of a, a pull both ways. Okay. Don't worry too much if it's a bit narrow because you can always add additional pieces later to make it to cover up any areas where you've got any white showing through. And then I'm just going to felt this down with my, my, my multi-tool. So I'm just going to felt this down, check it on both sides to make sure it's all nicely felted. So that's looking pretty good. So now we're going to add this to the head of our sculpture. So I'm going to place it so that the bottom piece, those loose fibres there, are going under his chin, onto his chest. And then the back piece is going onto his back area. So I've got some good anchor points there to secure it into place. So you want to make sure that the piece that you make, regardless of the, the sort of the lengths I've given earlier, that it's there's about an inch there to go over the chest and about an inch to go over the back. So you've got good anchoring so that it's not going to come away at any point when you felt the rest of the head wrap in later on so I'm just giving it a good old felt with my medium needle and once it's all anchored down on the back and the front then we can start working on felting down those sides so I'm just taking my needles I'm using them one over the other and then just initially going back to that sort of um, icing cake icing a cake um, what's the word I'm looking for analogy that's the word I'm looking for and just very gradually bringing all these pieces downwards, doing it piece by piece, using my needles one, and, one over the other. So creating these lines, and then once I've created these lines, then just working on each one to felt them down into the head. So that one there, I'm just gonna take it down through the middle with my needles one over the other, and I'm just felting it down round into the body until we've got something that looks like this. Really focus on under the armpit and the shoulder as well. They're really key areas where you can quite often get a lot of looseness. The back of the head as well, that can tend to be forgotten sometimes. So really make sure that you're felting down around the back of the, the neck area and also focusing on getting that neck back in as well, getting that divide between the head and that chest area there for his neck. So you want to do exactly the same thing on the other side, so then eventually you should have everything tacked down. And then you can start really focusing on felting that head and getting that shape back into that meerkat's head area. So what I'm doing here is I'm just flattening around the, the sides of the head to give it more of an angle either side and a flatter top, as meerkats do. And then also really focusing around that neck area Area as well. So you should get to the stage where all of the brown wool bats that you've added to the head is in contact with that core wall and it's all nicely felted down. So really focus on making sure that you're getting that neck felted back in and I'm using my medium needles there just to do that and also be, be sure to felt around that, that snout area as well and bring the shaping back in for there too. 
So you want to keep felting until you get to the stage where everything's nicely incorporated and you've got some shape there, but you still have some squidge so we can add the eyes and the nose and do some more shaping later. But that is the end of part two. So tomorrow in our last and final third part, we're gonna be adding his facial features. We're gonna be wrapping his arms, wrapping his tail and making him look a lot more meerkatty. So I really hope you enjoyed this and I will see you tomorrow for the last part. Have a wonderful day, bye.